This is the Brighter Web Podcast, insights on growing a small business using the latest technology and marketing best practices. I'm Robert Carnes, and as always, I'm joined by Mickey Millen. Hey, Robert. Good to see you. So this episode of the podcast, we're taking a look at a tool that every digital marketer should consider using, a content calendar. I love content calendars. They can be so useful, but I know a lot of folks don't use them. So I know you have six main reasons, uh, six quick main reasons why someone should use a content calendar. So what do you what do you have there? So I think it, number one, allows you to actually manage more content. Scalability is really important. Number two, it allows you to be more strategic and intentional about actually managing that content, being proactive rather than reactive. Oh my gosh, we haven't updated the blog in six weeks. What do we do? <laughs> yeah. uh, number three is actually having one place where all the content lives so you can actually see how it all works together. Having a strategy across channels rather than having things live separately. Four is actually getting the timing right, so making sure to manage the cadence of how often you're posting, making sure you're not missing deadlines, all of those different pieces are much easier with a content calendar. Number five, staying consistent. Like I said, not letting months go by without actually posting anything. If you've got a rhythm and a cadence and a calendar where you're posting things, it becomes a lot easier for consistency to happen. And then finally, number six, giving yourself more margin, right? So not burning yourself out with constantly having to try to keep up with the content treadmill or the, the content rat race. If you're actually have a place where you're looking to post content, you, you can be, build out more margin for yourself and uh, be more intentional about it. I want to redo that last one just because the okay, like, yeah. Slack notification there. Yep. Turn off that. I'll just let it keep running. You can okay. trim it. So just jump back in wherever you wanted. And then finally, number six, do your sanity a favor and actually build out a little bit more margin for yourself. If you actually, again, have a consistency and a cadence and a calendar where you're posting things and it will help you stop being on the content treadmill and, and constantly feel like you have to post something. Gotcha. So you said the word content like 20 times in the last <laughs> minute here. But what do you mean by content? Are we talking about blog posts here or social media? What, what content are you putting in a calendar? Great question. That's definitely a buzzword that can be all-encompassing at times, but really when I say content and when what we're talking about is uh, blog posts, social media posts, email sends, uh, email campaigns, podcast episodes like this one, videos that you're creating to go online, even things like events, webinars, conferences that you've got going on with your business, anything that you're producing and sharing online, I really feel like fits into that content bucket. Yep. I love the idea of published content when you have something great you want to share, but then you can, like you said, go months at a time without having that. So having the calendar to force you to think through it and plan it can be great. Absolutely. So in my opinion, having something is better than nothing. If you can just have a piece of paper to write your content calendar on, that puts you like in the top 1% of marketers out there probably. But we love our tools here at Green Melon. Uh, so what, what are some tools you like to use to, to put together a content calendar that go beyond paper? For sure. So the sky is the limit. It really, there's no right or wrong tool to use. It's really about figuring out what works for you, even if that is a sheet, uh, <laughs> even if that is a physical sheet of paper, like, that's something, but there are several different options, thankfully, when it comes to building out a content calendar. We at Green Melon use uh, Google Sheets. Just keep it simple. Spreadsheet. You could also obviously use Excel just to pull all the stuff in there together. There are other apps that you can do like database apps like Airtable and Notion and Evernote where you can actually build out more of a database for a content calendar. I know you've spent a lot of time playing with a lot of those tools. So. Yeah. yeah. We, well, like our podcast that we're doing now, we do that in Notion just because we can do a bit more with that. and. We'll talk about some of the meta information we have in there, but there's certainly some great tools like that. And then of course you can get into project management tools. We use ClickUp for our project management. You could do it in there or Asana, which I still miss Asana. Asana is so beautiful and so great. It's not quite powerful enough for us, but it would be great for this thing or Trello and that kind of thing. And I think there's some others that are made for this application too, right? Correct. I haven't actually used any of them personally, but there are some content management platforms that are built for stuff just like this, CoSchedule, Story Chief, and Content Cal are actually built with this particular thing in mind. And those out allow you to have a little bit more features and a little bit more automation, but they don't give you quite as much control. That was one of the reasons why I like to still stay in something like a Google Sheet that gives me a little bit more control over how I want to build out the content calendar, what fields I want to put, all of those things. So, so we have this calendar, whether it's on paper or in Notion or CoSchedule or whatever, what stuff would you include in the content calendar for your items? What pieces of data should be in there? So 
very much like the last answer, it really depends on what you want. You can make this your own. So, but a lot of the fields that we typically use and, and recommend for people to include in their content calendar, uh, a title, maybe a headline for a blog or the, the subject line for the email, one of those things that helps you easily identify what piece of content you're talking about. What's the date? When do you actually want to share this mm -hmm. piece of content? That's obviously the calendar part of this. Yeah. The audience that you want to target, this helps you be more strategic about who you're actually trying to talk to. I like to also include a status maybe of whether it's you know just an idea, whether it's actually being written or a video that's being shot, or if it's already completed and published, that just helps you kind of make sure to keep up with the task side of this whole thing. Maybe even links because most pieces of digital content are existing somewhere online. So whether that's the link to the blog post itself, the email preview, the video, all of these different things help you actually access all of the different pieces of content that spread around online. Um, and then obviously leaving yourself a space for notes or comments just help with the collaborative side of things so that you can make a note to your teammate of where something lives or the status of it. Again, just open space for you to you know be creative with your production of your, your digital content. Gotcha, and that's, so there's a lot of things in there that people need to consider, and I think it's important to realize you don't need to have all those. I think Correct. really the two essentials would be the title and the date. If you just have a calendar of what I'm gonna say on what day, that's all you need to have. And that's then, true. again, if you can have more information, again, talking about the audience and the status and some of that, certainly can be valuable, but it can become overwhelming, and frankly, you can spend a lot of time doing that when you could be spending more time writing content. So depending on your situation, your agency, your personal blog, whatever you're trying to do this for, more or less of those could be could be valuable. But cool. Any other tips for people trying to get a content calendar going? Absolutely. So to your point, the goal of this is to make it simpler. Make this a tool that's not getting in the way. You don't want to spend all your time managing a content calendar. You want to spend your time actually making content. So yep. as simple and as custom as you can make it to your situation and make it something you're actually going to use. So helping it to make sure that it's something that's going to keep all your information organized and that it's going to be in a place and a format that you're actually going to update is really yeah. important. <laughs> Collaboration, like I mentioned before, actually using a tool and again, a place that your team is going to actually use rather than you just trying to be uh, a solo marketing person trying to do it all on your own. If the more you can get other people on your team involved, uh, the more likely you'll stick with it. Automation is a plus. Again, some systems like Excel spreadsheet, you're going to have to do most of that manually. That's the benefit of some of the more dynamic uh, and custom pieces like uh, CoSchedule or Airtable is that it's got a little bit of automation pieces that you can add into there as well. And then this is also a huge uh, boost for actually ideating content, right? So mm -hmm. as you come up with ideas, having a place to drop them into your content calendar to, so that you're not running out of ideas to create content moving forward is really a huge benefit as well. But for my personal content calendar for my blog, a big piece of that is just a drafts piece on the side, just where I throw ideas so that way when it's time to figure out what am I gonna write about next, I have some stuff on the calendar and then a list of ideas ready to go there. And then my big tip, and you've alluded to it sometimes, is just do it. I mean, this is, we have a lot of great stuff in here about different apps you can use and meta information and stuff and I encourage you to look into all that for sure, but just getting something going. Again, a piece of paper saying this month, here's my four blog posts I'm gonna do and get them written down and start planning is, again, puts you miles ahead of almost everyone else. So just doing something to get started is a great place to go. Yes, your, your audience and your sanity will both thank you <laughs> if you sure. implement a content calendar. If you have been, thanks for listening to this episode of the Brighter Web Podcast, brought to you by Green Melon, a digital marketing agency. To help your business keep up with the latest digital marketing trends, check us out at greenmelon.com. You can also find show notes for this episode and more episodes of the Brighter Web Podcast at abrighterweb.com.